Hello, hello everybody, I am Insomniac, and today for you fine folks, I have a patch update video. Now, I haven't done one of these in a very long time, and I am sorry for that. On top of that, I also promised a subscriber to do a damage optimization and tech video next, with a myth-busting segment in that as well. But this patch got me so excited that I had to make a video about this first. So, what is in this patch? That has got me so excited. In the background, you are watching some ranked tournament mode gameplay. So, there is some really good gameplay in the background for you, so enjoy that. But more importantly, I have some really exciting news for you. And honestly, I can't wait. So, let's get right into this. First of all, I have to say, I'm not gonna be talking about the entire patch, as that would make for a ridiculously long video, because there are four pages of bug fixes if you want to check them all out you can go through them i will provide you with a link in the description down below i will check all of those bug fixes out just to see if there's some important things in there that might interest me but the most important things are listed on the front page so first of all before we get into the hero balancing we're gonna talk about some really game changing bug fixes and the first one on the list in my opinion is already one of the most important changes that the developers have made in the entire lifespan of the game they have finally removed the flicker bug from the game yes you heard me right flickering is gone or at least gone to the extent that we know of which is a massive change because this has been plaguing the game since I'm gonna say week two of season one and it has stayed in until October 5th, which has been way, way, way too goddamn long. But finally, it's fixed. Another important change for me, because I actually have experienced that bug exactly once, but I was screaming at my screen when it happened. Basically, chip damage has been implemented in a somewhat recent patch. And chip damage currently is not supposed to kill. However, there were a few ways in which a system would bug out and and let you die through chip damage. All of those issues are supposedly fixed. And another one that has also made me want to throw my controller through the room multiple times, assassins now have the same parry properties as non-assassin heroes. So basically, if you're unaware, there were a few moves that assassins could parry, no other character could. The best example, the most striking example that I can give you is that Raider could do his regular 28 damage zone attack after a guard break, but every single assassin was able to parry that. And one that I have discovered and experienced multiple times, which was super super frustrating, is that if you got the caber toss as Highlander and you threw your opponent on the ground who was an assassin, even if you timed your unblockable perfectly, they would get up fast enough so that they could parry it, which was one of the most frustrating things I've seen in recent memory, and I'm so glad that that has finally been fixed. But the character that has definitely gotten, in my eyes, the most necessary bug fixes is Highlander. So first of all, a bug made guard breaking after a forward dash harder than intended, so that's good that that's gone. His out of stamina run speed has been slightly reduced, and the biggest change that was done to Highlander is that he can now change his guard stance during a parry, which he was not able to do before. And that's exactly why in my Highlander guide, I had to do all those specific best punishes because of the fact that he couldn't change guard stances during a parry. Basically, that part in my tutorial is now wrong, but that's the smaller of the two issues here. I'm really glad that he's able to do that now, because basically, if he parries a sideline attack, he now gets a defensive form top heavy, and if you parry a top light, you also now get a defensive form side heavy, because the recovery on light attacks is exactly 1000 milliseconds, and his heavies have a startup time of 1000 milliseconds. But because you switch guard stances, and your opponent can't switch guard stances for 100 milliseconds, those heavies will hit now. You don't always have to switch into the offensive stance to get your unblockables. You get 
those heavies on regular light attacks parries now, which is super, super good. I was always wondering why that was never a thing with Highlander, but I thought that was intentional. Apparently it was not, and I'm really glad that they've made those changes. There were some other changes on him, but those are really not all too important. And then Gladiator also had a lot of bug fixes, as I can see here. There was a bug with Gladiator where his side dodge attacks and side dodge punches would launch anywhere between the 100th and the 400th millisecond window, but they were never consistent. Now, this has been changed so that they will always launch at the 300th millisecond, making them completely consistent now. Another bug fix, when he deflected, he would get a skewer, but if he deflected a light attack, a lot of characters could dodge out of the way of the skewer and punish him for it, which was stupid that that was a thing. So, for gladiator players, this is a good change, as in you are now getting the reward you're supposed to get. Then again, I have not been deflected by a gladiator more than five times since he was out so people are not gonna use this change anyways now and the other bug fixes for gladiator were not all too impactful but if you want to look at them you obviously can check them out so that was the bug fix segment i usually don't go all too in depth into the bug fixes as they are usually not all too important but there were some important ones in there so i wanted to share them with you we're now gonna move on to the hero balance as this is the more interesting part of the video and there are some huge changes in here some changes in there I thought that would never see the light of day and I'm so glad that they did so let's check him out so first of all most of the most frustrating unlock tech stuff has been fixed there are still a few unlock techs or exploits as they actually are. Some of them still exist, but most of the super, super, super frustrating stuff has been fixed. If I have footage of this, I will try to display it in the background, but basically opponents could unlock from you and just turn their character ever so slightly to the left and right to make certain attacks hit slower or faster, making them basically impossible to parry, which was super frustrating if you fought against that and it made for a horrible playing experience Experience. So I'm super glad that that has been fixed to the biggest extent. The change that the developers have done is that if you are in range of your opponent, but you unlocked an attack, your character will automatically snap onto your target, whether you are locked or unlocked making those hits consistent and effectively eliminating all attack regarded unlock tech which is so good that that has finally been taken care of mostly there is still some unlock tech that you can do but this should have fixed most of the issues we're moving on to the hero balance segment and this is the part that got me so extremely excited not necessarily the zone attack flicker i was i was super happy about that then most of the unlock tech fixes i was also super happy about but this segment right here is the part that got me so extremely excited we're starting off with warlord as a few things have been reverted to his pre-nerf state for example the headbutt timing has been reverted personally i thought the headbutt was fine with the timing it had if it was a lot more unsafe on whiff so if you finally were able to dodge out of the way of it that you would be guaranteed a guard break or a light attack or at least some sort of good punish that was not character specific for example radio could get a guard break but only because he had a side dodge guard break and that's just really stupid that only one character in specific could do something about the headbutt but regardless of what i think about it they have reverted the timing back to its pre-nerf state, effectively making it 200 milliseconds faster. The dodge recovery duration of Warlord has also been shortened from 700 milliseconds down to 600 milliseconds, which is still a nerf to how it was before the latest one, but he now recovers 100 milliseconds faster. His side light attack damage has been increased to 13 down from 12, and although this is only a difference of exactly one point of damage, this is a significant change, because now if your opponent had 
Below critical health when regenerated all the way back to 25 health. Previously you had to hit him three times with side light attacks, now you just have to hit him twice. And a similar change has been done to the counter stab, as that now deals 12 damage instead of 10, again because of the same reasoning. And now, the Centurion reworks slash nerfs. I'm going to read through every single one of them because every single one of them is very, very good. The charge heavy range has been decreased to 4.25 meters down from 5 meters and the charge heavy finish range has been decreased to 4.75 meters up from 5.75 meters. So overall, the range of his charge attacks has been decreased, which is a good change because Centurion sometimes would fly out of nowhere and you weren't prepared prepared for that jump attack and all, and the worst part about it was that on those charge attacks he would get some huge combos. So those range decreases have been made to reduce in the amount of those situations where he would get jumped out of nowhere. Then the uncharged heavy finisher link into jab has been delayed by 100 milliseconds, making the jab dodgeable now. The normal jab stamina drain has been decreased to 30 up from 40. So this just means that when Centurion jabs you, he doesn't take as much stamina off you as he used to. The 30 stamina is still quite a bit of stamina drain, but it's nowhere near the insane amount that was 40. The normal jab miss recovery has been shortened to 700 milliseconds up from 800 milliseconds, which is a slight buff, but I'm gonna explain as to why this is not so significant in a little bit. Another very very big change is that the Legion kick doesn't stun anymore. It still has the same startup times, the same hit reactions, but it no longer blinds you. The Eagle Talon, the jump pin attack that he had, now costs 20 stamina instead of 12. If that's a big change, let me know. I don't play Centurion all that much. And the jab now costs 12 stamina, and that change works consistently now. And the biggest nerf to Centurion, the one I was hoping he'd get, but never thought that he would actually get is that the jab no longer stackers on walls anymore. This is such a great change because that was where most of the frustration came from playing against Centurions as they could throw out a really fast heavy attack and even if you were able to block it the jab would hit and then they would get an almost infinite wall combo which was so goddamn broken. But now this whole comboing into walls thing with jabs has been completely removed to its full extent. That simply does not exist anymore and I'm so happy that that is the case now. Centurion still gets combos, for example, if he gets a jab he still gets a light attack, but he doesn't get any wall combos off, off a jab anymore, which is so, so great. At this point I'm just sounding like a broken record stating how glad I am that this piece of sh has finally been nerfed. I'm so glad that this nerf has been made to Centurion. and the guy was unbearable, he was broken and overpowered as fuck, and luckily he has been nerfed now. That's what I think, you don't have to agree with this, but evidently the guy was overpowered, elsewise he would not have gotten that many nerfs and not so many significant nerfs. Now, does this mean that Centurion is completely useless and completely ineffective now? Well, by the way I'm saying it, you can probably guess that, that I don't think that that is the case. Centurion is still a great character, he still has a great moveset, but he no longer has this insane damage potential that he used to have. He's no longer this easy win and no skill kind of hero. And that was apparent to me that he was that kind of hero when I was playing against a lot of Centurions when they were playing against my Shugoki. Now if you don't know anything about fighting Shugoki, against Shugoki you have to play his matchup for as long as he has armor. And I killed so many Centurions disregarding that fact. And a lot of them gave me hate for playing Shugoki when in fact they were playing the much more broken class. And I told them, look, you don't even play the matchup correctly, why are you even complaining? It's obvious that you lost, you're playing this matchup wrong. And the best answer I've gotten so far is, I don't want to learn or play the matchup. And I'm like, yeah, that's exactly why you pick Centurion, isn't it? 
because Centurion didn't have to care about his matchups before this patch. Now he has to think a little bit more and I'm glad that he is not as brain dead as he used to. Anyways, I've wasted all too much time on Centurion. Let's move on to the next character that was changed significantly and that is Shinobi. So Shinobi is going to get a health increase up to 110 down from 90. So this is going to give Shinobi a small boost to survivability as he is able to take 20 more damage. Basically, all the changes that were made to Shinobi were stamina cost decreases. For example, his double dodge stamina cost has been decreased to 24 from previously 29. His double dodge kick stamina has been decreased to 10 from 20. His backflip stamina cost has been decreased to 12 from 17 and his frontal stamina cost has been decreased to 12 also from 17. So his moves regarding his mobility cost less stamina and the more important change that you are definitely going to notice immediately as soon as you get your hands on Shinobi, the reflex guard duration has been increased to 800 milliseconds down from 600 milliseconds. That means that his reflex guard stance stays up for longer. It's still shorter than a lot of other assassins but it is nowhere near as short as it used to be. They have given him this buff because evidently it was very hard for a lot of players to block as him. I personally didn't have that much of a problem with that, but the developers have also stated that they don't want Shinobi to be a character you're supposed to block with. And that's why they made all those stamina cost decreases because they want to promote you to use those tools or be able to use those tools more freely and not have to worry about your stamina all the time. As that was definitely something that I know noticed when I was playing Shinobi most of the time, whenever I did one of my mobility tools, I always asked myself, am I gonna have enough stamina after this or is this going to put me in a bad situation? And most of the time, I didn't have enough stamina because the stamina cost of those moves was too high. Now this has been addressed. The last important thing to mention here is that controller layout customization has been added. You're not able to fully remap every single key on your controller if you were using one but at least you have different layouts now and you can customize those layouts the way you want as well as you can now change the angles of your dead zone or your hidden stance and full block stances almost completely free to the way you want them to change which is a really really great addition to the game yeah that's basically everything for this patch update video i hope you enjoyed it i hope you learned something useful if you did please be so kind and leave the video rating as it really helps me out and if you're excited for those changes just as much as i am leave the video a like but anyways thanks so much for watching hope i'll see you next time Take care.